Hello. Hi, everyone. Hope I'm coming through okay. Let me know. It's time for some Scholars of the South Tigris. Oh, I haven't accounted for the chat. I'm going to have to make that get out of the way. I might have to make it smaller. Let's make it a bit smaller. Got all my angles right. Will that interfere with anything else? Let's have a quick scan through them. Yes. We should not have to chat. It's a big game. We've we've zoomed out quite a bit. There we go. That'll quickly solve it. Hi everyone. Now you can see it all. Well, you could in this angle anyway. But you can see it all up close now. Are all of the buttons working? That button's not meant to be used, so no re no reason for that to work. Hi everyone. Hey William, James, Steve, Thomas, Shem. Co-designer Shem Phillips is in the chat. So this is coming to Kickstarter in just under a month at this point. It's the next game in the South Tigris trilogy. And we are doing dice placement, a bit of bag building, a bit of colour mixing, a lot of translation, basically. We have got these scripts, these scrolls that are in various languages. Hopefully a button will take me to them. And we want to try and translate these. One of the things that we can do, of course, there's many ways to victory, loads of different interlinking things. But you know, the core thrust of the game is there are these things in particular languages. We need to get them into Arabic. There is a kind of complexity. There's tiers of complexity of languages. But basically what you need to do is employ or use other people's employed translators who can translate different languages to get them to Arabic so they can be read. Basically, we're scholars, we want to read these things. So we need to travel to get the scripts into the various temples. We need to translate them once they're there using Oz or others translator. Yeah, I was saying that right. And we can progress up these various knowledge tracks to get benefits either immediately or when we rest and get all of our dice back. And once our bags are empty, we'll fill them all up and stuff. But I'll, I'll explain most of it as we get going. That's generally what we're doing. Oh, hey, everyone that just appeared. My chat just appears every now and then, by the way, if I miss you saying anything. Hey, Jester, Ben. What then play? Tony? Monster Mash? Tom? Vicky? Hey, I'm caught up now, I think. Yes, and you can, you can get notified. Steve's just pasted the Kickstarter link in the chat. You can register your interest there and get notified when it launches which is the 7th of march right i haven't just made up that date have i i think it's the 7th of march right so i have left this in kind of the the end of setup ish we would do this kind of in the middle of setup i think uh, but the the bot is not starting with the same things as us kind of they get to bend the rules they get to do a load of stuff of course a lot easier than we can but our, our choice at the start of the game is one of these starting four translators. And if I zoom in, you're not going to see the card underneath, are you? They are paired with starting resource cards. So it's going to determine loads, really. It's going to determine the dice that start in your bag, how many you're going to draw out, how much gold you start with, how much money you start with, how many workers and which kind you start with and any extra bonuses. It can be progress up certain tracks. It can be influence in the temples. But one thing I was kind of thinking, as a starting kind of nudge, everyone gets a goal card. And based on the goal card you were randomly given, that corresponds to a starting scroll card that we get, which is in Hebrew. So that's a kind of thing. Everybody gets the same kind of scoring criteria for the end of the game. So it's worth three points at the end of the game. I can turn every two silver. I've got the coins into gold. Every two gold is worth a point. If I've got six or more white dice in my bag at the end, I will lose three points. There are ways we can get rid of them, of course, throughout the game. So that's in Hebrew. And I've noticed just as a kind of starting thing, one of the scrolls that we can get fairly early 
is in Hebrew as well. It gives me points for scrolls that we've translated that are in Hebrew. So a nice little combo to begin with. And it will progress us up mathematics if it gets translated and if it gets traveled, if it gets delivered to the temples. There's also a starting bonus out here. If we were to take this translator, it would also give us a step up that track. So an e not easy, you've still got to do stuff to be able to do that, but that could be a nice few steps up the maths track to begin with. Uh, the higher up the tracks you go, of course, the better the bonuses, the better the stuff that you'll get. Just looking at what I knocked off the table then, it's me solo player aids. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. Again, like I, I've played this so far twice. And that's another thing. So the, the what was I going to say? The, the Kickstarter, yes, is in a month's time. I'm going to do another playthrough closer to the actual launch date where I will be poised, more polished, of course. Now, I'm, I'm, I'll be better at the game, hopefully. But yeah, it's never particularly about the strategy. It's about getting the feel for the game more than anything. But yeah, I, I might need your help more than ever. Uh, there are two lengths of game that you can play as well. There's casual and epic. I've gone with casual in this one, but I thought maybe for the other playthrough we could go for the epic game. There are many levels of difficulty for the bot as well, so we could step up a level of that. If we win, of course, if we get demolished, there's going to be no stepping up, but hopefully that's not going to happen. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards as well. And this translator can translate between these languages, can translate Hebrew, Persian, and Syriac. You need to make, once we get going, you need to make a chain from the language that the scroll is in to Arabic through these translators. So you could, for example, well, actually, this translator out here can translate Hebrew straight into Arabic. So maybe that's the one that you'd want to go for if you want to translate Hebrew, but you'll see that he won't stick around for long. So maybe he's not the ideal choice. So you'd want to go Hebrew to maybe Persian, Persian to Arabic with a translator like this. That's what I'm kind of thinking early on. So that's what I'm going to go for. So choosing that as my starting translator, I put my influence here. And I get this is my starting resources. Now, the other ones we don't need because the bot isn't getting these. The bot, though, as a as a little bit of an advantage, gets all of the other translators. There are not really any neutral translators. They don't put their influence out, so they're neutral in that sense. But the bot has ownership of all of these other ones. Hey, everyone that's arrived while well, I've been rambling on, by the way. Yes, so we'll, we'll get to colours in a sec, but basically a lot of the things that aren't primary colours are harder to do. They can get easier throughout the game, but yeah, say an action that you want to go up, the main dice that you will get and the ability to change the colour of dice will be into primary colours. So it could, it's even better track to go up. Good point. So my starting stuff. This card tells me what I'm getting. So my lovely player bag here is going to get filled with seven white dice. So remember, we get punished if we've got six or more of these at the end of the game. It's only three points. There's also a, a dice something at the end of the game. You will total up all of your colored dice, subtract the number of white dice you've got left. That's your dice sum. If you've got the highest dice sum at the end, you'll get some points. So you can think about that as well, but you can see how the bot is doing throughout the game. That will change and we might have to catch up with them. So there's five, six, seven. We also get a red die in there. And if you can see this zoomed in, can you see the little lines on the red there? Whenever you see a dice icon, they've got different ways of differentiating the dice. So you can see actually in my little colour wheel and stuff that's on the back of the rule book. The secondary dice have all got like a cloud behind them and there's different, you know, white and black stripes to differentiate all of the colours. Right, so I've got the dice in my bag now, haven't I? You're allowed to look in your bag at any time, but give it a give it a shake afterwards. You're not allowed to look in other people's bags though. So then I need to draw out four dice from my bag. So we've got, and roll them as well. So I'll try and just get four now. So I've got my red dice. So 
might be able to do something with that. Nice high numbers as well. And then we get two gold. That's going to help with all sorts of things, but translating, you've got to pay your translators in gold. Well, yours and other people's. They need to be paid in gold. Uh, and silver, even just for translating. If you're using someone else's translator, you need to pay silver. You need silver for tons of things, though. We get a worker. The workers come in the colours of the, the... in white and the colours of the primary dice, basically. So red, blue and yellow. And they will let you manipulate the dice. They can be used for other things, of course. There'll be things that we get that might have different costs if you can pay uh, certain combinations of workers. But the main thing that they do right at the start of the game is adjust your dice. But we'll see that when we do an action. And finally, I get to go up on the maths track, and I will get something straight away for this, actually. So if we look up on here, I go one up the track. So the tracks alternate between these solid slabs, and they are things that will happen if you harvest that track when you rest. So not now, but whenever you choose to rest, if the icon for that track has come up because the action cards you've played have done that, then you'll get that particular benefit. The, the highest one you've, you're on or are past. So I would still get that benefit, even though I've gone above it. As soon as I get to two, this is now my benefit. So add a white die to get two coins. Bad thing to get a good thing. As soon as I get to level two, though, I just get three coins, no cost. For, that, for now, though, I'm on one of the translucent, the non-coloured spaces. These are immediate benefits. So I get an extra worker. Okay, I hadn't planned for this. I'd had a thought. I'd had to think about my uh, my starting translator. <laughs> Here's where the thought process runs out. So I've only got a white worker at the moment. Is there anyone I particularly want going in? We could maybe get. Where do I want influence? I want. So another thing that can be nudging you, your goal card. I should actually have workers and dice on this. So there's a few things that you can do to get some immediate bonuses. So going up the astrology, astronomy, track three times will reward me with a purple die. As you said, secondary colours, harder to get. You've got to mix other dice to get those, but that would give me much better access to purple actions, which, hey, going up the maths track could be something to go for. So we also want to go up the blue track to achieve that. Uh, if I do some translating from the purple temple, then I can get a blue work. And if I do something involving this translator, then I can get a white worker as well. I think I'm going to start with a blue. So maybe having a blue worker, I could turn a die blue. I could go up the space track a bit be thinking about that. So I think that's that's my setup done. So my resource card now becomes my player aid, gives you a bit of a reminder of what you do when you decide to work, when you decide to rest. And it's an extra thing that happens when we rest as well. We always evaluate that track because its benefit is drawing more dice out of your bag. So as you can see, as you progress above the, uh, up this track, you will go from just drawing four dice every time you rest to seven if you get close to the top. You can see as well at the ends of the tracks, these are the points that you will get for every track you've gotten that far up. So as soon as you've gone one up a track like I have on maths, I've got a point in the bank already. Hopefully we can keep that going. So I am the first player. You're always the first player in a solo game. And so I can either work or rest. Well, it's not quite true because I can't rest. You've got to have played one action card to be able to rest. And it's how you get all your dice back and activate all of these abilities. So we can't rest. We're going to have to work. Everyone has this starting set of action cards in their player color. This goal card is also an action card. It will get rid of white dice from, I think it's pair worker to get rid of a white die. So doing the three tasks on it also gets you an extra option, an extra thing to do with uh, these action cards. So I've got to play one of these action cards into these slots and it will give me an extra thing that will trigger when we decide to rest. It might give me something immediately or when I choose to take it in the action. It's kind of extra things like drawing more dice, getting a worker of my choice, getting two coins or a gold. 
but you see that the the rest bonuses of these cards aren't so good. They're adding white dice back into my bag, making it more unlikely I'll get to my lovely uh, special dice. They will make my dice some worse, punish me for having loads of white dice, but you've, you've got to gain more, essentially, early on anyway. So we've got to work, we've got to pick one of these action cards and one or two dice to do that action with. I won't go on about what all of the different actions are right up front. We'll just do it as we go along. But there are four different actions and there are some slots basically that can have a choice between two actions. So another benefit of unlocking this space, it's got a benefit underneath it as well. And we can play an action card to it and have the choice of it's basically going up the tracks, doing research and translating a second time. Because we can only do each of those once not per round, but in between rests, let's say. Whereas recruiting and traveling, we can do that again. The difference between these brown and gray ones, you'll see more as we retire, but basically when, when translators that we have employed retire, they will come under our player board and give us extra options, extra benefits of carrying out those actions. At the start of the game though, there's no difference between taking this action or this action. Right at the start. Uh, although you are actually, if you pop an action card down on here, you're covering up your built-in benefit. When we rest, we will gain a white worker. Well, as soon as I cover that up, we're not. We'll get something else, but yeah, we wouldn't get that benefit. So early on, I'm thinking I want to get that card, aren't I? I need to get a translator locked in so that I could do some lovely translating. There is a translator available that can translate Hebrew straight into Arabic, but I would have to pay the bot a silver for the use of their translator, and it would retire them straight away. That earns them some points. So that's the kind of decision between getting all of the people yourself, you're wasting, not, not wasting, you'll still get benefits, but are you holding yourself up too much? spending too much money recruiting these people, paying to put them out so that you can use all of it yourself? Would it be better to just speed along and uh, pay other people for the privilege of using their translators? And it can mess them up as well. The bot has a few times already, just in these couple of games, uh, really messed up my plans to translate something by using my translator and retiring them just before the turn I was about to use them. So there's that kind of thing that you can do as well. Right, so do I want to waste, not waste, do I want to spend some time hiring a translator? We've got a couple of coins. I think we could do that. Oh yeah, I'm going to do it. Oh, that's a really expensive room actually. Now I've just seen a really nice benefit move up any of the tracks when you recruit someone in there. Let's do some recruiting. I think it would be nice... Yeah, we're going to be going up this mass track. We're going to get a load of money. I'm going to choose this action card whose rest bonus is harvest the mass track. So get the benefits from the mass track. Right now, that would be gain a white die to get two coins. But hopefully, we will have enough that it will just be gain a load of coins. So that's what I'm doing. And I have to choose one or more dice to go on here. This is where, now recruiting, it actually doesn't matter what colour of dice you use, so it's easier to explain going in. But later on, for other actions, colour is very important. So when we play dice of a particular colour, primary colour and white, the primary colour is what we are concerned about here. The white dice just adds to it. That is a red 11. Later on, as we get other dice, the colors mix. So if we've got a red and a yellow die there, I'm doing an orange 10 action there. And that is very important for things like when we want to translate scrolls, you have to be in the color of the temple that the scroll you want to translate is in. When you want to go up a particular track, the action you're doing has uh, got to match the track you want to go up. So yeah, it can be very important mixing these colors. For now, I haven't got loads of those options. I think I might just knock my numbers. I think I rolled pretty well though, I think that's all right. So yeah, we can put dice down. 
You can also play workers with your dice, up to two workers per die. If the colour of worker that you are using matches the colour of die, the worker makes that die a six. So whatever number it was before, it's now a six. If the colour does not match the colour of the die, the worker changes the colour of that die. And you can use them, I know a five is not a great example, but you can use them together. So remember you can play two workers per die. I could use this worker to make the die a six, and then this worker to make it a blue six. So you can do all of these kind of crazy combinations to get what you need. You're not just tied to the dice you've drawn out and the numbers that you've rolled. But you can usually make, uh, make some good things out of what you've drawn. As it is, I want to hire a translator who can translate, so I can do, I can go from Hebrew to Persian or Syriac. I want a translator that can translate Persian or Syriac to Arabic, the, the goal language, the, the end goal. It's the language that we as scholars speak. So we need things to be in that language. These two translators here would both fit that bill perfectly. So when you're hiring translators, the number of the action is the only thing that matters. You can see it's a grey dice icon. The colour means absolutely nothing for this. Only the number matters. And to be able to pick a certain translator, you have to have played at least that number. So I could just play one of my white fives right now, save my red until later when I might need it. And yeah, hire one of these. So the only choice really, what we can do when we recruit we can either discard the translator and just get these benefits immediately. So that's pick a primary colored die, pop it in the bag. Plus is put it in your bag. You see a little hand symbol, that's get it right in your hand. And get rid of two white dice from anywhere. Can be in front of us, can be from our bag, can be on our player boards. So get rid of them for an immediate benefit. That's your action done. And I've revealed one underneath. I will hire this one though. I think. Uh, the other thing that you can do is employ the translator. So they would, you would ignore this section of them. They would come down to the bottom. You need to pay the cost of one of these rooms to employ them in. You'll get an immediate benefit from the room itself, nothing that's on the card. The different rooms also show you a number of gold that needs to be on that translator in order for them to retire. When they retire, they come under your player board under an action of your choice, and they will give that action an extra benefit. So sometimes it's just gaining things. These two translators that are both on top of these piles, both want us to spend two workers of any color to get a benefit. They will also give you some points at the end of the game. So would I like the opportunity in the future to spend two workers to get a gold and a coin? I'm kind of sorted for coins. If I keep going up this mass track, of course, if the plan works out or get rid of white dice and add other dice. I said I was going to go for that one because I revealed the other one, but this is worth more points and I want shiny dice. I'm going to recruit this one. So I did a five. As we said, I haven't forgotten that bit. I've only got two coins, so I'm a bit limited to the room that I can put it in. Like this benefit here, going up any of the tracks one space, I'd love that, but we can't do it. So we can go in this room here. I'd get a red die in my hand now and get rid of a white die from somewhere. But see, on the upside, if it takes three gold for them to retire, they're there for you to use again and again. There is another, there's two more Hebrew things out here that I could hopefully make use of. You know, that would be both of my translators could be used three times before they retire and disappear. On the other hand, though, the sooner they retire, the sooner they go under your player board and start boosting your actions. So with two gold, yeah, I could go there. I could go here, get an influence in any of the temples and gain a white die downside. I could just get a worker of my choice. I could get an influence on a card. And if you've played Wayfarer, some of these things, especially when we start talking about how the bot works, some of these things will uh, be familiar to you. Like, hey, influence in the temples and stuff. Uh, so yeah, you can put influence on the scroll cards. And if anyone else wants to mess with those scroll cards, then they've got to pay you for the privilege. In the solo game, you can pay a silver 
to stop the bot from interacting with the card that you want. You can either let them and you get the benefit as usual, but you can pay to make them move on to another card if you really have your heart set on that thing. So I think, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. A bit worried about not getting anything very soon, but I'm going to pay my two silver. Hopefully this works out to go in this room here. So the immediate benefit, I get a red die in my hand. So I'll roll that straight away. So a six, lovely rolls. And then I'm going to choose to remove a white die from my bag. So that just goes back to the start. We flip over the translator to this side and we need to pop one of my influence on him to show that he's employed by me. Okay, that's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of talking to just do my first action. Hopefully I've laid a lot of the groundwork there. But the bot now gets a turn, been waiting here tapping his feet uh, so what do we do on the bot's turn we reveal a card so it's again this would be familiar if you've um, seen or played wayfarers so they've got these cards they've got blue top actions and red top actions as soon as they have played three of the same color you know they're going to rest next turn and depending on the cards that they've played it will influence what they do when they rest for now though we draw a card and this is a step keep forgetting but hopefully not in the stream you need to move their marker this many spaces again just like in wayfarers so one two spaces where their marker is determines their decision making really so if they want to translate a scroll they'll try for a greek scroll if they want to if there's a tiebreaker for which temple they take something from they're going to go for the green or you put an influence in if there's a tiebreaker to be had hey they're going to go for green if there's a translator to recruit they're going to try and tra recruit this translator and when they end up translating things from the various languages the scrolls go above their player board and it's going to determine some of their scoring for the end of the game so every chinese scroll they translate for example just gives them seven points the other things are more conditional so we've moved their thing two spaces and then we look on the top can they do this thing is this condition true if not they do the second thing they only do one of them so what they are going to be asking for is how many translators are employed, how many translators are in these rooms at the bottom of the board. And they will also be asking how many scrolls are in the temples waiting to be translated. So in this case, they are asking how many translators do we have? Are there six or more? So at the moment, there's five. So no, they can't do that top thing, which would have been... Oh, wrong button wrong button <laughs> which would have been to pop influence out on cards and pop influence out on one of the temples as well so they're not doing that instead they are going to recruit someone brilliant when they recruit oh there is actually some lovely player aids for the bot game as well so if you ever need reminding what they're going to do for a particular thing then all of the symbols and stuff are reminded step by step on here so they're going to employ a translator so they use their translator focus so we look at the translator their marker is on so i like to zoom out on the board a little bit here so that is this translator first of all is this translator already out if he was then we would move on to the next translator and keep going until we found a unique one if there's no way of getting a unique one then they would just go back to their first choice and just double up uh, but hey they aren't out yet so they're going to be recruited so use translator focus avoid duplicates place into rightmost room of target sum the target sum is hey as as with wayfarers the sum of the two most recent cards played so remember the numbers at the top so there's only one so far so the target is going to be two they're going to try and place this translator in room number two that's not possible so they keep going right until it is possible so there is that translator. Remember, there's no need for influence. The bot controls all of the translators I don't employ. So they go there and they would descend and loop back if needed. So that's all they do, basically. No other symbols to be had on that action. That is their whole turn. And so it comes back to me. So I've employed my translator. The next step is to travel. There is a Hebrew scroll sitting there waiting for me. I could maybe make it a bit easier on myself and just translate that one. But no, we want this one. So the travel action. 
Okay, so which action chord do I want? Do I want something immediately? Do I want something to influence what I'm doing? So I'll tell you about the travel action. You've got a marker up here on the top. The travel action mainly wants to know about your action value, but the color can be important as well. So you will move a number of spaces. There's these silver spaces. If you stop on them, you just get the benefits that are in the box. Uh, but if you want the cards, you'll stop in the black spaces. So the number is how many spaces you can move. You can move less if you want. And so if I want this one down here, I've got to be able to move one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So my action value has got to be at least six. If though, the color of my action matches any of the colors that I move through, then I can have that benefit. So if I want some coins, I'd like to make an orange or green action. It's a bit tough to do. If I can make it yellow though, I could get some influence on a chord. I'm probably not going to be doing the, the color. Sorry, am I talking about the room wrong? Assuming it costs. Oh, it's the sum, the, the sum, not the number. Not the red number. Uh, yes, the rightmost room. It was this one, wasn't it? Yes. They are looking at the, the silver value, of course. Uh, so there's only one available that costs two money. The translator goes in there. I do apologize. So I'm mainly concerned. I want my action value to be six. Could be more, but doesn't need to be any more. I could just do a smaller action and not get the scroll right away. But where's the fun in that? I don't think... Yeah, I haven't got a yellow worker to make a yellow die. I haven't got a yellow die in front of me. Red isn't going to help until here. Red and blue would make purple as well, so that's not going to help me. I think we'll just go with white again. So which action card do we want out? We could just go for the ones that will get us some benefits, get some more dice out, get me a worker. And you can do these before, so I think I'm right in saying, and we'll find out if I'm wrong in saying, uh, that you can do these benefits in any order of your choice. So... Once you get translators, I remember this isn't mine, once you get translators tucked under, so it would be whenever I travel, I would get the benefit, draw a die from your bag. You can do these things in any order. So there's the main action. This is an individual action. These three things are all individual actions. You can do them in an order of your choice if it particularly matters to you. So I could, if I really wanted a yellow worker, if I really wanted that influence on a card to keep that safe, I could, yeah, get a yellow worker, turn the die yellow, and then get that out there. I don't think that's worth worrying about too much, though. Now, getting other tracks, like the, the other cards, so there's, there's this card here that also has an immediate benefit. Get some more gold, get some more coins, lovely. And also puts a white die in my bag. All of the others concern harvesting a track activating the track again as the benefits now until you've moved up the tracks a lot of them have got costs so we will just get a worker here pay a worker to get a gold pay a silver to add a primary colored die to your bag pay a gold to move up any of the primary colored tracks and blue is uh, always happens it's not triggered by one of your action cards and it's just get dice out rather than another thing the only rule to remember is, yes, you can never use dice the same turn that you gain them. Yeah, so I, sh I should be putting them somewhere else to remember. I wasn't going to use a red die on that one, but in the future that could uh, that could get mixed up. So I think, why not, why not just activate a track that we know we'll be able to get a benefit from? Like, say, red, that will just get us a worker. And you use the names of them. Physics. So by playing this action card, we will harvest the physics track when I rest. So the color didn't matter, did it? Because the only color I've really got is red or blue, and that doesn't make a difference in time. I do want to move six. Luckily, I've rolled a six. I feel like the numbers have been pretty kind to me. So I'm not going to put two dice down. So I can move six spaces. I can stop earlier if I want to. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And make sure you get all of the bits right. I have actually been 
I've been swatting up. I got I got, I got notes. I got notes everyone. Make sure I do all of the steps. So we've travelled, yes, yes, yes. So you can stop on any of the other things, just get benefits instead if you want to. But I want to deliver some scrolls. Well, a scroll. So you have to stop in a black spot. Oh no, I'm not gonna have the money to do this. Oh, it's such a good plan. I need to get money first. So one of the, well, actually, one of the first costs of delivering scrolls is it's going to cost you four money. That might be one of the things to consider when you start splashing out on money to employ translators. But it's okay. We'll earn the money somehow. So maybe we won't do this. That's the next action we'll do. But the longer we leave it, the more likely he is to get in the way. Right, so getting money. We can get money by going up tracks. I just get it right. I was worried that I would still be more unwell. But I think we're all right. We haven't even had a cough yet. See if my button works. Hello. Okay, so the audio works in the button. That's fair enough, though. I was just talking about the button not working. So my money. I thought I was. I thought I was so smooth. Coming up with a plan, but I've already squandered the money that I had. Should have put it in a free room, maybe, and earned the two money in there, and then we could have been going. But we can go up a track. So, the research action. Going up one of these tracks, colour matters. For which track you're going to go up? Well, you don't have to go up a track. So here are the four options when you try and research. You can do any value, any die. You will just get a worker of your choice and a silver. Four or more. Spend a gold to go up the track corresponding to the colour of the action that you've done and get two silver. Eight or more, go up the corresponding track, get two silver. Ten or more, pay two gold to go up that track twice and get two silver. So would it be a terrible thing to do to get eight or more on this action? Would I be wasting too much of what I've got? I don't think so. We might want we might want some more dice to do more things in the future. We could we could like just go for it and put like I've got we only need to get over ten. Yeah, Shem says we could like just do a, a research. Like, make that blue. That's a purple 11. We've got two gold sitting here. I could wait on the translation. And that's another two up maths that we've done. And then once we've rested, we would earn some money. Ooh. Yeah, maybe it doesn't all have to be done in a rush. I was going to try and go up the blue track for my goal. I was only going a little bit. So that would be one of the three to try and work towards unlocking the purple die. But I kind of like that. What if we just did a... We'd have to work out getting gold later. Well, we could get a gold here. There's a gold. Let's go for that. We're missing out on gaining a silver in this way. But hey, it's, it's, it's going to be done. Let's do that. Let's see how this turns out. Because in, yeah, in both my plays so far, 
I've been kind of, I've done all right on some tracks, but not really got to the really big boosts of the higher positions. And just kind of concentrated on just like doing a bit of translation, which is nice. But let's try it this way. So yes, we are going to double boost purple and this will still give us some money. We've just got to sort out gold next time, which I think is going to be okay. Because I'm going to get one now. Because as you can see, I'm worried about not having it. Unfortunately, we're going to add a, a white die to the bag when we rest, but it'll be okay. We'll sort that out later. And we can gain a gold with this rest action if that's still there, which I think it probably still will be. So yeah, we are spending 11. We've got an 11 purple action because it's 11 and there's a red and there's a blue. So an 11 purple means we can spend two of this gold to go up the corresponding track, purple, twice. So that does nothing right now, but when we rest, we've gone from having to gain a white die to get two gold, two silver, to just get three silver straight away. And then the next one, we're up to the next points bracket for the end of the game, and we get an influence in the purple temple. And this is gonna be great for all sorts. Hey, I'm the only person with influence in the purple temple. I go into the special highlighted spot. I have got control over that temple. That's gonna be important when we get to the Caliph cards. There are four of those mixed in this deck in certain positions. We've not just shuffled them through. That's what this card was about. It tells us the various piles into which they're shuffled. But four of them are gonna come out in this game. When the fourth comes out, it actually triggers the end of the game. We play that round, we play one more round, and then that's that. Uh, but yeah, having influence in the temples is gonna help out with that. So yes, we've gone up there twice, and I get two silver. So we're halfway there to be able to deliver a scroll. And that's my action. And we've talked a bit about traveling a bit, a bit prematurely. So you only get the one below the dice on the track. Which one, James? Oh, do you mean, do you mean on the on the research tracks? So yeah, you get the you get the highest benefit that your marker has gone past or is on. So uh, yeah, it's it's gone from being it's still getting your money uh, to just be in a plain benefit and if we can get to six which you know i've got i've got in mind another couple of steps right that that would be three steps wouldn't it because you get this corner bonus when you deliver it you get this corner bonus if you translate it and you get any bonus any immediate bonuses in the middle which is another step up it that's another three steps i'm nearly at the top of maths okay we've still got some work to do and the bot might spoil it all for us before then but wow Okay, right. So that's all of my stuff done, isn't it? It's time for Bot again. He's been made to wait. So he's gonna move his marker one spot. And then he's looking at the temples. Are there five scrolls waiting to be delivered there? No, waiting to be translated. They've already been delivered. The three that are put there in setup are there. So can't do the top action. Instead, he's gonna do the bottom action and travel. And in brackets, it's going to get influence based on... It's harvest the math track. Thanks, Shem. Okay, so we've got to do another few, couple of steps. Still excited, though. Right, yes, yeah, so travel. Travel, 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 travel. Deliver. It's travel when I do it. The bot is just delivering with it. Uh, so, for delivering, use language focus. So, we look at their language focus. It's Hebrew right now. We go to the neutral marker that will move. I think when I rest, it moves. I don't think it moves another time. Uh, so it goes clockwise from the neutral marker. Oh, okay. We should have done something and put influence out. Okay, well, he's done one step. We can still do the other step. It's going to deliver my beautiful Hebrew script. Okay, well, we can still do it. I've, I've spent my gold now. He's not necessarily going to translate next turn. It's okay. Right, so yes, he's going to deliver this. He's going to try and put it in the... Oh, is it the next one? Oh, phew. Oh, so clockwise forwards from the neutral mark, so not starting with it. Okay, so the, there's another Hebrew one. 
that he's just putting out. So he tries to put it. Oh, as if they were moving. Ah, it does specifically say that in the solo rules. I remember all that now. So yes, it tries to put it in the topmost slot. It's all the same level. Uh, so it will use its color focus. Its color focus is on purple. So it's going to pop it in the leftmost one there, which is where I wanted to put it. It's okay. It's not ideal, but we can deal with it. So basically the, the different slots will get you different amounts of, zoom in a little bit, get you different amounts of influence in that temple. So there is just one here, two in the top slot. Bottom slot's a bit worse because you've also got to take a white die. But it's okay. There's some things to be translated in there. And yes, they get the influence that they would normally get. So they don't care about a lot of the things that the actions normally do, but they get that amount of influence. So they get that. They equal me in influence in that temple now, but they don't control it. So they've got to get more than me to control it and put their little marker in top. And it's, you'll get some points at the end of the game if you control it. But controlling it during the game gives you the, the benefits when these um, cards come out. So they have delivered. They need to replace it with a card from the top of the deck. And I don't think it can be anything other than a scroll for a couple of things, a Caliph card. Remember the word? Yeah, there's 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 three non-Caliph on top, so we're okay. But cards will be coming from the bottom as well. Okay, so the card I want still waiting. We don't have to panic about that. There is another Hebrew one there, but the benefit for this is it will give us a point for every Chinese and Syriac scroll that we translate, which we might do over the course of the game. But yeah, the, the one I have my eye on, I like more. Okay. So we are missing two silver and a gold. Would resting be the best thing to do right now? If we chose to take a white die, we could get that missing gold. We would earn the silver from harvesting the maths track, which is definitely going to happen. What would we do otherwise? We could recruit again. As long as we recruited with a value of three or more, discarding this translator would be... Don't look at the one underneath, everyone. Discarding this translator would be an influence on a scroll card and two coins. But it wouldn't get me the gold that I need. Maybe I should just rest, and that kind of ties it all up in one little package. But delivering would give you the gold that you need. Ooh, you're convincing me. What would we change the action to? We could change it to, you know, another track getting harvested, like the, the physics one we were going to do. We wouldn't gain a worker, but we would still gain a worker because physics is gain a worker. And rather than it just being white, it can be a color of our choice. Let's go into this world of wonder. So I want this translator. I need to do a three or more, but then I'm not going to have enough dice. Whereas if we rest, we'll get four dice back. Because I'm going to need two dice to be able to translate to make purple. And I haven't got a blue worker anymore. Oh yeah, that's going to get in the way. So we should do something because I had planned on having a blue worker. Okay then. I can't do the travel because you haven't got the money. Just do the recruiting, and then that will make this trigger, and then you can choose blue. It'll just be a couple of steps. Oh yeah, we could get a worker by employing the translator as well, but then we wouldn't have the full money. I've got two money right now. Yeah, because you could just get a blue die here. I was thinking maybe... It seems like a waste of a turn just recruiting just to get those two coins, because you're going to get a load of coins in a minute. I've used the card that gives me two coins, unfortunately, to get um, gold for translating. Whereas a pro, if I'd done it to get two coins, I'd have been okay. Okay. 
If we rest, then we would have an extra money and we could employ someone to get the worker and all of that good stuff. It'll be okay. The marker would move, but that's all going to be okay. I think either way, it's a rest and a couple of actions away from being able to deliver and pop things out. Because when I rest, I'm not going to have a blue die or a blue worker. You're very close. Oh, I still need a, I'm using two translators, so I need another gold, but I'll get that when I rest. You could just get a blue die. Like there are translators that could give you a blue die. Or that could just give you workers. Ooh, if we made orange. I'll tell you what. Shem knows this game. Ooh. So yeah, if we use the red die that we've still got, there's a risk of this holding up the translating. There's three dice in the bag and we'll draw four. But maybe we'll be able to change all of this. So yeah, traveling. I would have to use both of my dice, wouldn't I? So. Oh, I get to draw two now though. So that makes it a little bit more likely we'll draw the reds. So I get to draw two dice out. And roll them. And choose a worker of my choice. If I choose a yellow worker, then I've now got 12, a bit extreme, but I've now got a an orange 12. I'm right in thinking you, you have to choose the dice that you're using before you, before you do any of the bits, don't you? Like I couldn't have now chosen a lower white. I think I, you have to lock in the dice beforehand. Uh, but yes, now I've got the orange. We're still just moving the six steps to get my lovely Hebrew scroll I've had my heart set on since the start. But now we have the right colour to activate one of these bonuses we're moving over. We can take the two coins, which is the two coins I need to do the thing. There's always a way. Right. So all of that's activated. And now I can show you travelling. Hey, notes, come back. Get the steps right. I think the, the steps are pretty self-explanatory, though, at this point. Uh, there were good notes for a while, though. I'm not putting you down notes. So, the cost to deliver. You've got to deliver the scroll that your marker is now next to. You pay four silver wherever you're putting it. All of the costs are four. But depending on where you're putting it, you're getting an influence in that temple. If it's the bottom row, you're getting a white die. So maybe I don't want to do it in purple, even though... Translating something that's in the purple is one of my things. We could translate something else that's in the purple later. One thing that's important to note with this action, though, for delivering, you are not matching the colour of the temple you're putting it in. You don't have to do that. You only match the temple when you're translating it when the scroll is already there in a different action. This action, the colour is just about the stuff that goes around the outside. So, with the colours that I've got, I've only really got red, so I've not got like a ton of options of temples to put it. I suppose don't put it in green then. If you put it in orange, that's easier to do. Purple, we do want it in, but I'm worried about him taking this beautiful thing away from me. Let's put it in the orange. We'll just have to get a yellow worker later. And it gives us an influence in a different temple. I think that's going to be okay. So we've got to pay our lovely four silver. We get an influence in the orange temple. And we get a gold. You need a gold basically for every translator you're using to do your translation. So I need to... I could have got by with doing one actually if I was happy to use the, the bots. But then I'd need a silver and I'm not happy to do that. So that is it. We have delivered. We need to fill that gap in. Oh... I haven't had all of the things because when you deliver, you get the track bonus that's in the bottom right hand corner, which is maths. We're now at the four silver space. 
and we need to fill it in, which is just going to be another scroll for now. And then bot is going to move the marker two spaces. And are there three things in here? I'm really worried. No, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna translate Chinese. <laughs> there are three scrolls in there. They're gonna translate something. So, translating. Which scroll are they gonna translate out of the many that are out there now? They're gonna use their language focus. So, can they translate something from Syriac? No. Which gives us a nice view of the... There we go, that gives us all the scrolls. No, they can't do Syriac. So we carry on on their choice. Can they translate something from Chinese? Yes, which is a relief. Because, yeah, if that had got to Hebrew, I think... Or actually, if it got to Hebrew... Yeah, let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about what ifs. So they are translating this, which isn't great because that's seven points for them. Uh, the scroll that they translate just goes above their player board here in the corresponding space. So for every scroll of Chinese they've translated, they will get seven straight points. Everything else is kind of conditional. So, you know, a uh, point for every two translators they have uh, retired, a point for every two influence they have in the temples, that kind of stuff. Okay, they've done their thing, they don't do the bottom, so we know they're not resting next time because they haven't played three of a single colour yet. For me, I've got the gold that I need. I have not got the colours though. I need purple. So to get purple, I need two workers. I need a red worker and a blue worker. No, I don't need purple because I've put it in the orange temple. Oh yes, I've not finished with the bots. Also, next to the language that they've translated is a number of gold. You get that much gold and they're going to pop that on translators. So looking at the bottom, their first priority is, from right to left, neutral translators that have that language in them, that involve that language. So Chinese, no, 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 no. Second of all, it will look at translators I employ from right to left that involve that language. No, no. Then, right to left, neutral translators that don't involve that language. So it will pop. Oh, it's going to retire both of its translators, isn't it? See, I just right to left. Oh, it does mine left to right. Neutral right to left, mine left to right. Doesn't matter in this case because they're not, uh, they can't translate Chinese. So these two get the gold, and remember, this gold is the amount they need to retire. Now, the bot isn't gaining benefits from this, putting them under the player board, anything like that. They are gone, though. So if I was relying on this translator to translate Hebrew for me, gone now. It happens at the very end of your turn that they're gone, in case that makes a difference for what you were going to do on your turn. They're going to score these points, so a point each at the end of the game, and also that uh, you know, for every Sanskrit scroll they manage to do, a pair is a point. So they just go off to a pile for later. So that's the last thing that they do when they translate. Okay, I've got the gold, I haven't got the workers, and I have put the scroll I want to translate in the orange temple. So I'm going to need a red worker and a yellow worker. I've got all the gold that I need. I don't know that I want to particularly do another action. I've got no silver. So if I was to hire a translator to put them in a room, it would be this one. Get me an influence on a card. Maybe protect my card from being translated. Oh, this should slide up. Immediate benefits that get me workers. This translator could get me one worker of my choice and a white worker. One more step on maths gets me two workers of my choice. Unfortunately, that's a purple thing and it's going to be difficult to do. We do get a white worker if we hire, like, the translator 
that I really like. This one, hey Sam, thanks for joining us. It's watching Persian lady. Ooh, which one? Ooh, moving up a track is very nice. It is a primary track. Is that the one you meant? I could put influence on a thing. I could get a gold. I could get a coin. Or this one, removing two white and adding one of my choice. That would make it easier to do, wouldn't it? Yeah, one of, one of my goals is to do something with this particular translator. So yeah, dismissing this translator would protect my scroll for me and get me a couple of coins. This one would be great would be great for some early bag building though. How many have, have I have I got a lot in my bag? I've only got one in my bag. So we could get rid of one from my bag, one from my board, and pop say a yellow in there. There's not an amazing chance, but there's a decent chance of pulling out the red and the yellow, and then that's sorted, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Designer showdown. I'm gonna go with Sam. It's gonna it's gonna steal me Hebrew scroll. I just know the bot's gonna steal me Hebrew scroll. We need to do some stuff to do that. You can't just place that down there. So basically, which track do I want to harvest? I am gonna have a white worker. I don't necessarily need. Could give them up. I am gonna definitely have coins because when we come to resting, I'm getting two more whites into my bag. Three? Oh, if I want a gold, not necessarily three. So another thing as well is that. All of these things are mandatory unless there's a cost involved. Then it's your choice if you want to do that thing. Oh, is the... Is the... Is the... Hello? Hello? I think I'm moving. It seems grainy. I might be back. I'm not too sure. I'll wait for your feedback. I'm back. Hi, everyone. I don't know where I went. It just said reconnecting for a bit. Nothing's changed. We stopped it. We started it. I think we're back. Right. Now I've got to try and rewind. I was doing this. Well, I placed that. I was doing this. I am dismissing this translator. I do apologize. You do lovely work. I am going to get rid of two white dice so they can come from my bag, my player area, my player board. I'm going to just get rid of the only one that's in my bag. My bag's empty. And one off my player board. So we might as well have the one in front of us. And then I can gain a die of my choice. And so it's yellow. It goes in the bag, unfortunately. But it will be the first one drawn, actually, because you don't fill up the bag until you need to. Well, actually, you do fill it back up in one step of your resting. But heck, that's beside the point. It's not going to happen now. So we've recruited. We've dismissed. I think we're caught up. And it's time for the bot. It's not my fault this time, bot. There was a stream hiatus. Zero is how far the marker is moving. Are there seven translators? No, you just retired loads. So it's going to recruit a translator. First of all, can it recruit its favorite person? No, he's already out. So we loop around. You are not employed. And so it's going to go for the sum is two. So the rightmost two value room, which it can't do. So does it loop to the next? value now ascending and looping so the rightmost three value room boom it's trying to get these translators retired isn't it oh flip them over and i think that's that hopefully the mute button worked then okay they are gonna rest next time I think I'm going to rest this time. Yes. So. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we can. We've only got a, a white four as well. We can only translate. 
So no, we've got to rest, we've got to rest. So when you choose to rest, reveal the bottom card of the scroll pile. So this bottom card is definitely not, uh, I forget the word every time. Is it Seraph? It's not Seraph, Caliph. I think it's Seraph, Egyptian. Uh, so we reveal this. My decision, I, I wrote down the decision tree. Uh, well, it's basically, I think I can remember it now. So this new card that you drew, if it's a scroll card, is the card, oh, first of all, advance the neutral marker, the number of spaces equal to the points. The neutral marker only cares about the black spots. One, two. Then, is the card that's next to the neutral marker now, has it got an influence on it, protecting it from being messed about with? No, it hasn't. So it gets replaced with the one that we just drew. Then we look over at the temples. Are there any empty temples? If there was, this card, the one that I've got after the first decision, would go in the leftmost empty space. There isn't an empty space, so this card is removed from the game. Have I got that right? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Steve's bot powers fixed everything. Right. I've got all this space now that we haven't got the starting bits in as well. I should bring some uh, funky dice in, shouldn't I? So you can see some more colour. So there we go. Reveal the bottom scroll card. Then gain your income. Left to right on your board. So first of all, we're going to harvest the maths track. The highest thing that I've got to is four silver. Bar H. So I gain four silver. Next thing that happens, remember, unless it's a cost, it's not an option. I've got to put a white die in my bag. Next one, I've got to put a white die in my bag. Next one, if I put a white die in my bag, I could have a gold. No, we're not going to do that. I'm going to spend my gold pretty immediately. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Then we are going to trans. Then we're going to harvest the philosophy track, which would like me to spend a silver. I've just gained four of it to gain a die of my choice. We've got two red. Let's pop another yellow in there. Try and even things out a bit. And then finally, we harvest the astronomy track, which always happens. And that is draw four dice out of your bag. So that is basically the dice I've just put in it. Oh, quick take back before it matters. Why don't you then, for your second one, say that it's red that you want, and then you know that you've got a red and a yellow. You're not drawing any more out yet, and then it could be white when you draw randomly. Yeah, primary colour dice. Yeah, you can't choose the secondary colour dice for these things. Draw up to four. So you could draw less if you wanted, or you would stop when it was uh, empty. So yeah, if I, if I say the die that I want from here is red, we're definitely drawing a red and a yellow, and we can just do the translation, I think. We've uh, done all of that. I don't know why I'm moving them about, because there's four dice in this bag. We draw them. So there's the dice. I don't think the numbers matter, right? You have a white die in... Oh, draw up to four. Ah, oh, that's why it matters. Okay, so we could still fail at this. But if we did fail at this, then we could draw the two and it would be okay. No, it wouldn't, because they're all going back into the bag. Okay. Maybe that's why you should have removed that from there rather than your player board, but you didn't. Okay, we're drawing three then. I have drawn the ones that I needed. And yeah, I don't think number matters. So there we go. We've had all of the incomes. All of your used dice now go back into your bag. And then all of your action cards come back to your hand. The workers go back to the supply that you spent. The ones you've still got stay in front of you. And we're ready for some translation, I think. But not before the bot gets their turn. They've got three of the same colour card out, so they are going to rest. And their steps for resting are all on their lovely cards as well. So in the same way that I did, they reveal the bottom card that could be... And it is! It's a Caliph card! I looked it up about ten seconds ago. Word just won't stick in my head. Right. 
So for this Caliph card, we should have an angle dedicated just to it. The people who are in control of the temples get to decide from left to right if they want to put an influence on this card and they put it wherever they want. Now, interestingly, it's come out at a point where the bot hasn't got control of any. So I could get two influence on this. I basically would give up control of the purple temple and have none, none anywhere. But we can get more later. So the options that you can have is on the top, it's always three points. The middle one, it's always a point and a secondary die. That's a purple die. Maths track, purple translation. And I can choose two. Uh, the bottom one is you can retire the topmost translator out of one of those two. So we'll get a kickstart to your actions, but you have to gain a white die in your bag or you can have a gold. Oh, thanks, Hive Cube. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You can uh, you can watch the recap and stuff on uh, YouTube. Hey, Monica, how's it going? 134 plays. Wow. So I'm kind of feeling like there's only going to be two influence popped on this. I should get that influence out there. Now, there is a consolation prize for everyone who has influence in the temple, but didn't get the lovely benefit. And if I had put more influence in, my control wouldn't necessarily be lost. But if I pop it out, I'm going to do that. So a purple die. And you know what? I want the three points. No one else is getting the three points if I don't choose them. So I'm kind of more inclined. So that is a purple die into the bag, unfortunately, rather than into my greedy fingers. But let's see, those two translators, I just get to retire them straight from the board, one of them. So that would make one of the actions of my choice, it's, it's two points, and it would make one of the actions gain me one of these dice or one of these workers. I kind of feel like, I know that's more white dice in the bag and that's not ideal. But I think that's a price worth paying. So the bot is going to now take control of this and they get a consolation prize. If they were a person, they would get a worker. Got a little reminder on their board. Whenever they get a worker, they get a coin. Whenever they get a coin, they move their marker forward and they do a interesting little thing here. They pass over all of these spaces. Their markers aren't on the tracks. Their markers are waiting in a pile over here. They've just knocked over. You pop their marker on their first thing here and they get another influence in purple. So I'm going to have to get three if I want to take control of um, purple next time. Resolve the... Hey, make sure you do that before you do the next guild because they might get like... Ne like in a couple of cycles, they would get an orange influence and then... Well, in, it, it might make a difference, yeah. So yes, I'm... I'm going to gain a white die, which I know is <laughs> what loads back in the bag now. You, that's give up a worker to go up the space track that I want to do three times. So many good benefits. Who do I want to retire? Do I want red or do I want... Look, there is a Hebrew scroll up here that will reward you two points at the end of the game for having four or more red dice. And I want to do things that are orange a bit and purple I'm going for red so when you retire a translator these four slots can have retired translators underneath and when you activate that action you will do their thing there's no cost involved here this is just gain a red die to your bag or a red worker to your supply I am definitely going to translate It might help later on if this was in a different action. I haven't shuffled their cards, have I? The bot marker. I haven't finished the bots resting. 
Oh, it's because we're in the first steps of the bot's rest, aren't we? I was just going to correct that, but we're still in the bot's rest. Uh, should their marker be two more spaces forward due to the rightmost blue card? Uh, oh, no, because they did the bottom half of it because there weren't seven or more translators out. So they just hired a new translator. So they didn't get those two coins. Hey, Matt, how's it going? I'm losing my voice. Right. So, yes, I think I'm probably going to recruit workers a bit more. And, yeah, when it comes to the point of translating, it would be too late to gain the dice that I need, if you see what I mean. Whereas I could, like, if I really needed a red die or a red worker to translate or go up a thing, I could easily recruit someone without having to have any money or anything. I feel like that's all right. So I'm going to pop that there. That's just something because they discard the bottom card and it happened to be one of the super mega cool cards. They now have control of the purple temple there. They don't get a consolation prize for that one because they didn't have any influence there. Uh, no, unfortunately, Marty's still not joined us. So next up, that was just their first bit. So they discard a card just like I do and we go through the same stuff. Now, one little thing to note is when we refill this because someone just did a delivery and it was one of those cards, you do another one to keep the display full. When you draw from the bottom and you get one of those cards, you don't uh, do another one. So move their influence marker on their board. This is affecting their dice sum. So we look at what their majority of cards is. If it was majority red, they would get worse. If it's majority blue, they get better. So they started out at minus two because I'm playing on a easy difficulty, the easiest difficulty. But uh, yeah, that's gotten a bit better. A lot better than mine is at the moment, I think. Then they gain benefits based on the number of scheme cards that they played. So because they haven't filled up their stuff, they don't get this benefit, but they do get this benefit. They put an influence out on a card. So when they do that, they use their language focus, which at the moment is Chinese. So is there, first of all, they will look in the temple. Is there a Chinese scroll waiting to be translated in the temple they can pop a influence on? No. So then they look for the ones out in the travel space. So there is a Chinese one there. So they pop an influence on it. Then that's the only benefit they're getting because they did do four things. If they did five, they would also get to retire someone. Well, they would get to retire someone instead of doing that because that would be covered up by the card they did. So, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they shuffle all their cards back together. Okay, we are both freshly rested. I think I can translate now. So translate is this action. Which card do I want to put in there? I don't know that I'm definitely going to go up any other tracks. Suppose this Hebrew one, if we're planning on that, maybe the size of the chemistry track? would be one to do. I don't particularly, like, getting more workers would be helpful. But it puts more white dice in. Yeah, for now, I'm going to do that action card. Make the chemistry track happen. So the number doesn't matter for this action that I'm doing of translating a scroll. The colour of the action matters. That's the temple that you are allowed to translate a scroll from. Get me notes up and me steps. So yes, target scroll card in a guild matching the action's colour. So I've got orange. I'm going for the orange temple. There it is. 
uh, place a gold on each translator you need. You need to work out a line to get from the original language to Arabic. So I am doing Hebrew, which the scroll is in, to Syriac, Syriac to Arabic. You need to pay a silver for every other person's translator you've used. In a multiplayer game, if they're not owned by anyone, it goes back to the supply. If they're owned by another player, it goes to them. In the solo game, all of the neutral ones belong to the bot. In this case, though, I hired translators that I needed. So we've paid them. We take the translated scroll. It goes above my player board. And I get the immediate benefit of going up a track. So maths yet again. And we are going to get two workers. Oh dear, which colour? If we... Right, I've not got great numbers. So I don't think I can get ten. We could get like to the top of this purple track. I do want to move more and do some more travelling. I haven't, I haven't got the gold to go and do tracks, but let's get, if we're getting two workers, I'm going to go for, yeah, red and blue, so that we could, maybe that's something to think about, going up that purple track. Okay. The only influence... Oh, so they, they don't follow the... The language is just their first choice in the temple, and then they go the other... They go through their other decisions in the temple, only if all the temples have got influence, they then go to the map. So first of all, they go into the lowest row, then their colour focus, which would be purple, which would be Hebrew. Hey, Jen. How's it going? Hey, David. Right, so I've done translating. Have I done all of my bits? Oh no, there's a, there's a bonus in the middle of the card as well, which is Harvest Maths, which is another four coins. I've got seven silver. Slide up scrolls in the House of Wisdom. Retire any translators that have enough gold. I think we are good to go with that action. And I have done a translation. So now, that's another three points at the end of the game plus one for every Hebrew that I've translated, which at the moment is two, hopefully more and more and more. Unfortunately, that wasn't from the purple. Oh, I should have this worker, shouldn't I? Because... Oh, yes, I did... Ch Does this count, Shem? The, the one that I got as a bonus from the card, the Caliph card, I retired her. Does that count as my goal? Because that would be another plus reason to do it. If it is, I get that white worker as well. Not that I'm using it right now, but to know it counts. <sighs> Things are cooking. Okay. Bot time. Moving zero spaces. Are there three scroll scrolls in the temples? Yes. So they are going to translate. First of all, they will try their language focus. Is Chinese available? No, it's Hebrew or Persian is your choice. Da -da 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 -da. Hebrew. There's two Hebrew. It will go for the one in the lowest row. Both the same. Then colour focus, which is purple. So the one they've put their thing on. So it's a nice one. It was in the purple temple, so would have helped with a goal. And it was Hebrew for another point. But it's one that would, would have given me points in for translating Chinese and Syriac, which maybe I'll do, but I haven't done as yet. So that goes in their Hebrew slot, which gives them a point for every one of their research markers they've placed down. At the moment that's one. So every cycle they've basically done of their resource track. I apologise for... I don't know if it's audible to everyone else, but my, my voice is going... I've had a cough. Right. Hopefully it lasts out. Yep, yeah, yep. They've translated. They now... What have I got this in my hand for? Because it was on the card. Uh, they translated Hebrew, so that is one gold. So starting from right to left, neutral translators that can translate Hebrew. There is one. There is a retirement. One gold is all he needed in that room. And that's it. That's their translation done. Yeah. Okay. So. 
continuing on the Hebrew track. There is another Hebrew scroll six spaces away. I've got more than enough silver to be able to do it. I could get it put in the Purple Temple and get two influence in the Purple Temple. We've got to do this. We've got to do this, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Plan slowly percolating. Right. I'm just tempted, like... What if we draw two more people out? And, like, if I use my... I would like to use purple and get two coins, but that seems wasteful. If we could get to a six and use red to pop influence on it to protect it, or blue, either or. I just haven't got any blue dice, so you probably want to save the blue worker. And then this would hopefully, fingers crossed, draw me a red worker, but if it didn't, I could get a red... If, it did, if I didn't draw a red die, I could get a red worker. I think, yeah, I'm going to do some travelling. Travelling with you, a three, which with a white worker can be made into a six. Am I bothered about putting the influence out? Yeah, I'm really scared. So I'm going to make it a six by using a matching worker, and then you can use it to two workers on a die. So it is now a red six. I'm travelling, and I can get a red worker here, actually, even if all else. So I might not even need to do that thing. That is adding a white worker in. No, we want dice. We want dice to be able to do things. So yeah, let's let's do the thing. Six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is the scroll. And I need to pay four silver. One, two, three, four. And I get two influence in the purple temple. I don't take control because I'm just equal in there. It is something to be said, if you delivered it to another temple, they've got no influence, you would get control, and you know, it could be happening in a few cards' time. But we're going for this. This gets me a gold. Again, I need two gold to be able to do my translation from Hebrew to Arabic with the setup that I've got, unless I recruit. There is a translator that does... No, it was just out at the start. Yeah, he's gone. He's long gone. Don't worry about him. Okay. You've gotten stuck. Come on, you you were getting there. Okay, yeah. there, there, there. Got all of those bits. Go up the chemistry track. Remove a white die. Let's get it removed from the bag. And that's that. New card to replace. I, I can't remember if this could be... Uh, I'm not looking. Caliph card. Has there been three yet? It's not one. So there's three on top that it's definitely not. And then there is two scroll cards and a Caliph card mixed together in the second stack. So I think we're into the realm now where it very well could be. Right. That gets replaced. Oh, and I haven't had my bonuses from the card itself yet. So two... Dice from the bag, and we've got, hoping for a red, we've got a pur purple's even better. It's a six, but the number doesn't matter if we're going to translate. I've got a rest before I can translate again, though. And we can get a worker. Well, let's get a red, then. Because maybe we, we could use the purple for mass track. Ooh, possibilities. Right. That's that done. But, moving two steps, and are there three scrolls? Didn't I do something? Yes, I have not done. I did that with a red die. I get to put an influence on a card. I was just panicking then that my, my card's out in the open. No, we've protected it, we've protected it. It's going to translate. Can it translate something Greek? No. Because then it's next choice, Hebrew. And I think it would choose my card, right? Language focus, it would go to Hebrew. Lowest row, they're all on the top row, so it would use its colour focus. 
Its color focus is green, so it would go to its next one, because there isn't a Hebrew in green. It would go to its next one, so purple. It would have taken mine if it hadn't been protected. Thanks, Sid. So yeah, it is going to translate the other Hebrew one. It's muscling in on me Hebrew scrolls. What's this about? Right, so it's going to get another point for every one of these it pops down. Another gold co goes out. So this is a neutral that can do Hebrew. So he gets the one gold that's up for grabs. And that's it. Okay. I've got to pay a coin. The end conditions of the game are... Oh, yes! I am forgetting something about the protection. The end conditions of the game are when the fourth Caliph card is revealed, finish that round, one more round. So yes, the, it's not as simple as that's protected. So it targeted this. I've got protection on it. So I can let him have that and I get a silver or special to the solo game, I can pay a silver to the supply, not to him, to make him choose something else. So yes, you're right, John, thanks. Uh, I have to pay to protect, or to keep the card that I'm so desperate for. Okay. So it is tempting to just go rest so that I can have my translate action back. But it's also tempting To get a gold, go twice up, say the blue track, and then we're nearly three and we've nearly got this done. And I would get more dice out of the bag when we rested, but that's adding another white die in. I want to try and do a bit less of that. I would like to do another action first so I can get my maths harvesting going even if we just recruit a translator there's no more Hebrew out here so we might have to start branching out into other languages I mean Syriac over here that is get the gold from the translator which one? Dismiss and get a red die. Which bit? Which bit do you mean, John? Ooh, I've only got two silver. Just thinking that lovely Syria dismiss. Oh, a worker for the leaf. Do you know what? Yeah, which tra which translator do you mean, though? Oh, that's harvest that track. That that one would get me up the blue track. Oh, do you mean to just get this and get a red die or a red worker in? Just dismiss anyone. I mean, giving up a worker to go up a track in, like, a terrible bad thing. Yeah, there's not a gold on any of the... Oh, 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 oh. No, there is, there is. I'm talking rubbish. Yeah, if I use a five, then I can get a gold. 
And then we could go, we could go up the, then we could go up the mass track. We are protected as long as I've got a bit of silver. As long as I use a five and I've got, I mean, I don't want to use two dice on it really, but we've got a white worker just waiting in the wings here. I like your plan. Do I want a red die in the bag? Do I want a red worker in my hand? Changes the dice some, doesn't it? I think I want a red dice in the back. What's it in the back? Two red, three white. I want a red in the back. I have a red in the back. And then from the action, yes, because it's now a six, we can choose this translator to get me the gold I needed. And we could do a, a another... We've done so much maths research. We've basically perfected it in a minute. Right, yes, I like this. In with the bot wins, what was my... I know, I'm... Uh... Fifty-eight was my last score. That's my best score so far. I'd be happy if I beat that. If the bot beats me, fair dues. He's very good at the game. But, if I can beat fifty-eight. Right. Are there five scrolls? No. You keep translating them. It's going to deliver. Okay. So, it's language focus. Is Hebrew. There's no Hebrew. You've had it all. So, it goes for... Next one along. Persian. Yes, there is a Persian. So, clockwise from here. Oh, so, you can see it a little bit better. There's only one Persian, basically. So, that's the one it takes. And it's going to pop it into the highest row which is over here, which is going to, unfortunately for me, give it two orange influence. I could have, I could have put it there, couldn't I? I couldn't have put it in the top because that was still there. But right. So that's that done. They've had their influence. Do we use all of the dice? I'm only going to get four dice back. Would be at the top of a track though. Any further purple movement would get me purple influence. I feel, I feel good about this. So I don't want more white dice in. Okay, tracks. See, so you let me get more dice in. You get me a worker of my choice. You let me pay gold to move up primary coloured tracks. And I'm not going to have gold because I'm about to spend it. This lets me spend a worker to get gold, though. It's just that this would happen first. So we will go for, I'm going to have the money, yeah, I'm going to have loads of money because this will go first, yes. We are going to do a great big, this is a purple 10 action, and I've got two gold. Over here, we've got 10, spend two gold to go up that track twice. So when we harvest it, which we're going to when we rest, we get five silver now, and an immediate benefit, either... Recruit someone or get two workers. And remember the two silver. And remember you haven't filled in this uh, map space. I'm glad it wasn't a, <laughs> was it a, a calic card. Because that would have like wound things back too far. Recruit someone. I've got money. I want to kind of, I want to make sure I've got one money spare. So I've got three I could spend recruiting somebody. We're going to have to branch out into a different language. More Hebrew might not even come out. We've got ch this this Chinese one here gives me a point for every Hebrew, and I've, I've only done two. Don't get too excited, but it's doubling up on conditions. They score their full amount for every time you've got them. So I can just gra I can just grab anyone as if I'd done any die. So who do I want? So who can ch translate Chinese? So Chinese to Greek. That doesn't help with my other translators. Oh, Chinese to Hebrew, though. I would need three gold to do the chain. But... 
but the chain exists. I th I'm going to employ that translator. The thing I've just thought is, if I'm willing to give up my very last gold, my last silver, my last coin, I could go up any track, including purple, and I could take control of the purple temple. I'm about to get chemistry. I could make it so that my income is a gold rather than giving up a worker for it. But then, if he translates again, which he keeps doing, I'm not going to have a silver to be able to put him off me beautiful scroll. No, I don't. He keeps, he keeps messing me up. I've got three, though. I mean, the three isn't bad. Blue in my hand, get rid of a white from somewhere. Or yellow in my hand, get rid of a white from somewhere. But this has only got one use. But then you get it. You could be raking in the orange influence. You convince me. Yes, three silver. Pop them there. Yellow in my hand. And get rid of a white. We'll do that from the bag. Oh, but now I've got a yellow. Stopping me drawing as many. But we've taken a white out of the bag. It's okay. The purple's waiting there. Right. What was all that in aid of? Oh, yeah, from that. And we're at the top of the maths track. Hooray. That's the aim of the game, right? Whoever gets to the top of the math track first. We're moving two along here. Are there six translators? No, there's five. I have not flipped my translator or put an influence on. That would be pretty bad to forget. So they're going to recruit a translator. Is their favourite out? Yes. So, oh, he's not out anymore. So the sum of three, the rightmost room that costs three is going to be this one. So they'll stay out for a little bit longer. And did I get two coins for doing the tech action? Yes, I took them first. I took them before I started dithering in case I forgot. Did I? Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that I did. Right, so they recruited a person. Now, do I want to rest? The only I could recruit again, I could travel again. I haven't got the money to deliver. Hmm. Maybe we should just rest. It means I'm only going to get three dice out of the bag, but... Think of all the things we're about to get. Let's rest. Okay, reveal the bottom card. Is it a Caliph card? No. So, the neutral marker advances four spots. One, two, three, four. Has this got an influence on it? No. So it gets replaced. Are there any empty temples? No. So this gets discarded. Then, income. Matt's income. We have just boosted that to five beautiful silver. Then, why die? They're coming back. Psychology is the basic one. Pay a silver to get a primary die in the bag. Got a lot of red at this point. I've got no blue. There was, oh yeah, the card I'm getting wants me to have four red, which I think I've done. What's in the bag? Yeah, three red. We've got four red. I don't think we really need that. You didn't get the blue worker translating the purple house of wisdom. Where have I missed that? I think blue dye. Nothing that wants any of the dice colours. Focus card. <gasps> Yes, even better. That's why I was desperately going for the Purple Temple. Thanks, John. Whoop. Uh, yes, that's why I popped it in the... No, yeah, not quite yet, John. 
Yeah, that is the plan. The first one I did was from orange, and then the one I'm planning on doing next is in purple. That's when we'll get that. We want to try and get to three on this as well, so we can get that unlocked, get that gold card, get that space. It's going to be great. What am I doing? Yapping. Uh, deciding which primary colour to take. So I've already got four red. That's pretty good, isn't it? If you want to keep doing purple things, maybe we should go for another blue. Yeah, blue. Why not? I've got yellow in front of me. Right. Then, chemistry is still the basic... Oh, it's give up a worker to get a gold. Oh, We could get a red worker again quite easily, couldn't we, if we desperately need one. And we've got three in the bag. And because we need three gold to do this daft translation chain I've come up with. Not daft, you're very great. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll get the gold. And then I get a white worker. And then we translate. Then we evaluate harvest, space, astronomy, draw up to four. So I get three out of the bag. And they're going to be two reds and a white. So we can. As soon as we get two gold, no, we don't need two. We don't need, yeah, we only need two gold. Three gold for the future for when I want Chinese to enter the mix. But for now, we're still in Hebrew, so it's okay. Yeah, you've done that, you've done that, you've done that. All the used dice go in the bag. Because this will also give me a point for every orange die that I can get. It'll give me one when I translate it as well. All your action cards go back in your hand and the workers go away. And bot is still going. They will rest next time. They loop around. So their second thing is to put a gold on the leftmost neutral translator. And so that's going to be one of the starters. Okay. We can do the translation, right? I just need to be able to make purple, and I can. Do we want to draw more people out? You keep putting white dice back in, though. We need a gold first. We haven't got the... You could get a gold immediately from doing that. Can you get a gold from somewhere else? I mean, dismissing the translator again. Oh yeah, I've only done one thing on the AI's turn, thanks. <laughs> I haven't even done, I've only moved their marker. Are there five translators? Yes. So they're going to get an influence in a temple. So first of all, they want one where nobody's got any influence. So they're going to take control of the green, sadly. And they're going to put another gold on. Retire this translator. Right. Yes. So, get a gold. There's dismissing. There's this action card. I think the those are our ways to getting gold. Could also get a red worker from doing this. Or a red die in the bag, but I've already got a lot. Yeah, there's nothing else that can immediately get me that. And we could recruit again if we needed to. And it, it's still like, we could use the red worker to make the red die a six. Doesn't matter that we don't need it to make purple. Let's recruit. So first one, I think we want to keep putting maths out there to get us the money before anything else goes in. You're going to need, though, a five. So that's your white worker spent. We can get more. Go on. There you go. Right. So we'll gain a red worker from the retired translator. I've only got one retired translator. I haven't, I haven't done much translating. I've been learning them time. So yes, we are dismissing another translator. 
to get a gold. And that's that, isn't it? That's all I'm doing. Bot is resting because they've already got three of one color. So reveal a card from the bottom. This is going to be rubbish if it's it's not. Okay, same, same as if I do it. One, two. Has this got an influence on it? Nope. Oh, I like the look of that one. I have gone up this track once. Greek. No, I'm not good at translating Greek. Uh, is there an empty temple? No, so you're gone from the game. Move the influence marker left or right. The majority was red, so their marker goes... Their dice sum is minus two again. Benefits based on the number of cards they played. They played all five, and the majority was red, so they dismiss, they retire this translator. That's a point. And more if they get certain things done. And then they shuffle the cards. So I think next rest is going to be one of them. So I might want to be thinking about influence. This translating is going to be great, but it's not going to get me any influence anywhere. One more influence on purple and I control it. Even if I gave one up, I'd still control it because they have to have more than me to take control. Thanks, James. See you soon. What does not? Oh, you just Im does he just imagine? Do we just treat that one as the one that moves? Influence. You give me a green influence. Yeah, purple influence is going to have to be you either go up the maths track or deliver something to the purple temple, which you could do. I just feel like the next thing to come off the top or bottom, I've got a feeling both of them are going to be... I really want to translate. Yeah, I think it would be bad to let the bot just get all three things. It'd be nice to have one and the first choice. So I think I'm going to travel. <coughs> Let's see. I was going to do this Chinese one, wasn't I? Because it was already going to be five plus another three. For the three Hebrews I will have translated. And I had got it in line to do Chinese. Could do Sanskrit as well. That's what we that wants me to have a lot of retired uh, people there. Oh, if I if I wait, yeah, they're not going to rest. It's just they're going to deliver. I think. Like the, I don't think I've got time to wait. That's the only thing that I'm like worrying about. That. Um, I feel like the next person that delivers or rests is going to trigger one of those cards. You can't be guaranteed that because that, I'm not good at remembering how many cards have come out. But I've just got a really bad feeling. So that's why I'm kind of thinking of throwing it all away to get an influence on purple now. Delivering a red scroll will give you two gold. It would have got me the gold I needed doing that last turn, wouldn't it? I should have just delivered it last turn, not bothered getting a worker. Red scroll. Give you two gold second from the track. 
ah, 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 because it would move, it would get me one for there and move me up the track as well. Ah, next one, I get you. And we could use that to move up more tracks in future. And this Chinese one isn't vital, is it? So if we're traveling, I think I need to draw some more dice out of the bag. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I haven't moved up that track at all. The if, if you want to keep moving up a track, it would be Greek. Then you're moving up another secondary track to making it hard for yourself when you've got loads of red dice and you could just keep moving up that track. Right, it's travel. I think we need more dice out of the bag. I don't want to put another white die in. We need a value of four. It will let me get a worker back. Let's just pop in this one. Yeah. It's tempting to mix colours and stuff, but I don't think I'm going to. I wish three was enough, and then we could just do it with yellow, but we need four. And I haven't got a yellow... I could get a yellow worker. You're not going to use the yellow for anything in particular right now, are you? I don't think so. So I'm allowed to do this, aren't I? That I could get the yellow worker and pop it onto the card now. Making that a yellow six, I think. I'm sure I've already asked this. So I'm only going to use four of it. Oh, but yellow gets you an influence on a card. Are you bothered about an influence on a card? Well, red gets you nothing. You might as well do something. And then you can save your red for this. Yeah, we're delivering. I've got loads of... Oh, I've got five silver. That's a, that's still okay. So yeah, we'll deliver this Sanskrit. And it's something that I can... Well, Sanskrit is on that translator. Deliver you there. Get me a purple influence. Now I've got the most. I take charge. And... I go up this track, getting me... A gold and a gold for the delivery. And everything's great, I think. Also, draw two out the bag, and that's going to be a yellow and a white. So I think it's pretty good. Bot. Oh, 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 not bot, because we've got to fill this in. Was I right to be scared? No. <laughs> I'm sure it's the next one. Bot is, and of course, bot is not delivering either. Right. So. Oh, it's it's not two coins, John. It's getting influence. I haven't got an influence. Uh, so do I want that Sanskrit one? I'm probably going to retire four people. It's like it's six points, isn't it? You'd go up the red again. Make red your next track. What else are you going to do? Sanskrit. I mean... We're already at seven. That's an eight-point card right away. And it would get us a purple influence when we delivered it and when we translated it. Yeah, that's... That sounds good to me. That is another travel action in the future that is six away. That's doable, isn't it? That's doable. We could always do that one, but I'm not married to that one. I did like everything that I was hearing about go with the red track and stuff out my own mouth. We haven't done their action. I'm just... Oh, yeah, I didn't do the influence. Now we do their action. Is there seven translators? No, there's five. They're going to pop translator out. They would like to put this translator out, but he's already there. So is this translator out? No. Sum is zero, so the rightmost zero cost room is this one. And that's it. Okay. So, it's translation time, isn't it? We'd better do this. Yeah, because we can't travel. We can travel again. No, don't do the translation. We don't need yellow for anything, do we? 
Why don't we? So, yeah, say the red track, which we might go up yet. The number doesn't matter. All that matters is that we make purple. So let's make this dye purple. Well, let's make this dye blue. So they'll mix to make purple. So that I can translate something from the purple temple. Hebrew. And as before, Hebrew to Syriac, Syriac to Arabic. Both my translators, so that's all good. My influence comes back. I have translated the thing. I get... I'm not forgetting any steps here, am I? That slides up. You go up the chemistry track again. So we'll now get a gold... Ooh, maybe we should have picked chemistry. Get a gold when that pops off. Don't need to pay a worker anymore. And... Another immediate benefit, get an orange dye in the bag. Oh, so it would be okay to do chemistry. Maybe you should get that Greek thing. You can't translate Greek things. That's, that's for the future. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah, and so a point for every orange. We've got an orange now. Two points for every four reds. I've got four reds. A point for every Hebrew. There's another Hebrew. It's great. I think that's it for my action. I think I've had all of the bits. So the bot is moving to. Are there eight translators? Oh, six. Two, four, six. Yes. That is six, isn't it? Small numbers for my eyes. Apparently. I can read sevens, but not sixes. They are going to pop an influence out. So first of all, they're on Greek. Is there a Greek card out in there? No. So they go along their languages. Is there a Hebrew? No. Is there a Persian? There are two Persians. So then it would go to their color focus. So the color focus would start back again here, wouldn't it? So it would be the Persian that's in the green temple. Am I right in saying? So they would lock that in. And get an influence in a temple. Oh dear. So where no players have any, not true. Where the AI has none, not possible. Use color focus. The color focus is, put, is green. So actually, I'm fine with that. Still gives me a tiny bit of control. And if they put one in purple, they wouldn't get control of it. You've got to have more than me. Okay, that's their turn. So, I've got two gold, haven't I? I could go a couple of spaces up the red track, couldn't I? We'd kind of like this chemistry to be out. Now I've got the gold reward. I mean, traveling again is another possibility, isn't it? Especially since, like, this is looking a bit nicer. It's just I haven't got the language for it. The one you've reserved is guaranteed eight points and a couple of influence. But the Greek one is like a interesting little thing that just occurred to me. But you can't translate Greek. You'd set up to translate Sanskrit somehow. So we could just travel again and get that Sanskrit. I haven't got four coins. No. We will... Let's go up the red track. I think this will be good. Research. You are a red six. You are a white five. So that is a red 11 action. Can I pay two gold? Yes. To go up the track twice. So. Oh, thank you. Starting gold card. I translated. Oh, I've got blue. Does that change what I was going to do? I think it does. Just be good to have. Yeah, we want to go up the blue. Go up the. Oh. You could go up the blue track. Ooh. Make it a six and then make it blue. I'm just thinking for this. And that's more workers in a minute when I rest. That's more dice. 
I know we were excited about that red track. I was as well. But I'm going to go blue. I paid the two and he get me two coins. We're up to having this and we get an influence on a card. I mean, if we're doing sense, my Sanskrit translation chain is disappearing though with one more. These both retire with one more translation. That one is kind of nice and does move me up that red track. Syriac is easier to translate. You can go straight to Arabic from Syriac. I'm just... I mean, it's, it's got potential to be able to be at four, haven't I? And that would move me up another one, make it the third one. So many possibilities. We don't have to do anything with it. We're just putting an influence on. Yes, and more action spots if we had that freed. We can research or translate twice before rest, having to rest. I'm liking this. Right. I think I'm done with all of my bits. I think we... Yeah, well, we've got no dice, so yes, we're resting next time. One. Are there five scrolls? No. So he's going to deliver. I think this is surely one of those... Um, Calif cards. So delivering. Starting from here... Moving along. Target language Hebrew. No, there isn't any. Persian. No. Syriac. Yes, this one. It's going to deliver that to... They're all the same, so it will do colour focus, and it's got purple. So it will get a purple influence. This means it's not going to take control, but next time... It's going to... It's going to take control. If, if I spend that influence on the Caliph card, it's going to take control of purple. But that's only one point for a majority in that. Okay, is this going to be one? Yes. So we will do another card. Because you can have two in a row, potentially, because of the way the stacks are shuffled. So, oh. the There are events, not for the first Caliph card, but for the second one onwards. So this is every neutral translator that's out on the board gets a gold on it and every starting translator that's been retired their owner gets a silver does that mean that the bot will get three silver because they've technically got three starting in theirs i'll get one no no i won't i haven't even trans i haven't even retired mine they're gonna get a gold aren't they Just the starting translators. <laughs> okay. The chain's going to need rebuilding. It's okay. Is it? I don't know. There's not a lot of cards here. Right. So you're a starting translator. So they get three silver because they have retired all of theirs. So this goes on and they get an orange influence. I mean, getting control of another temple. They're a bit ahead of me right now. It's okay. We're working on things. Right. So left to right. From the temples. I can choose a space. So do I want three points. A point and a dice of my choice in my hand. Or retire one of those translators. Now that's a three or a two point translator. And quite nice abilities. Worker of any colour, white worker in an influence on a card. I've not I've not retired many people. But they will take the other two things. They've got control of the other two temples. Whatever I don't pick, they're gonna get both off. So if you want the points. I mean I'll get three points from the translator and an extra ability. So but you get a white die in your bag. We can deal with that. So, just do all me lean over things first. Uh, I am going to retire this translator. Pop. The translate action. Why not? White die in my bag. And then you're doing that and that. So the 
the bot is gaining, you know, hypothetically, a primary coloured die of their choice, that means they move their marker this way on their dice sum track. They don't actually get that. They'll get the points at the end. And then we still need to fill this in after the delivery. Another one! Uh-oh. Oh, I haven't done their secondary prize for this. For the first one, they were in second place, so they would have gotten a worker of their choice, which is a coin which moves them along. Uh-oh. So they get a green die, moving them along again. And retiring worker, they do retire a translator. It is a choice between these two. They do the one with the most points. If they're tired, they do the leftmost one. Uh-oh. Oh, thanks, Jem. Thanks so much for being here. I'm taking my time, aren't I? But I feel like there's, there's one, one more of these comes out, and I feel like it's going to come out from a rest. I don't think we've got long left. Will we get this stuff in? If I was playing the epic game, then uh, I'd have time to probably get these two. But I've, I went for the casual game. Right. So that was them delivering. We've done their, their, yeah, they had their influence, I think. They've done all of their stuff. Oh, and I was secondary just for the purple temple so I can get a worker of my choice. I think that will be a blue because I can get red quite easily. Okay, I'm going to rest now. This might just give me like one more. Oh, you retire as well. You got a gold put on you by the event. You retire and need to go under an action. Now you can stack them, but you have to pay a silver or add a white die to your bag for every person that's already retired under there. It's also the event for the third Caliph card where, a new, yes, a neutral translator is added to the board. I forgot that in my excitement. So you are not already on the board. So the first one that you come to in the little list at the top corner there, first one that isn't already present on the board, gets popped down. Where do they get put? Is it the rightmost space? I'm happy to be corrected on that. Actually, I might have it on me. No, I didn't. I don't think I put that in my notes. <laughs> Left most empty room, not right most. So, I'm resting. Is this going to trigger the end of the game? No. So, move one space. This hasn't got an influence on it, gets replaced with that. Syriac, I'll reward you for having purple dice and give you another one, and reward you for having a load of red dice. That's perfect. I can still translate Syriac. Maybe we swerve to this one. I mean, we've got a bit of time now, though. No empty temple, so that just gets discarded. Then, gain income. Maths, five silver. Add a white die to the bag. Chemistry, get a gold. Physics, get a worker. White? Oh, we'll get a white in a minute. Go for... Go for red. And then white. And then... Here, we draw up to five dice. I've got none. So... One, two, three, four, five. Lucky. I've got a red, I've got an orange. Well, that's still true. I've got a red, a blue, an orange, and a purple, and a white. Right. That's all of that. Dice go back in the bag. There are like three cards in that pile, I think. All these workers go back to the bag. I'm, I know, like, I've not played it that many times yet, but is wildly different so in terms of like the number of workers that I've used the position that I'm on the tracks in a way I wish I was playing the epic game but in another way I know that I've, I've been rabbiting on for quite a long time already right action cards to hand and I think we're all good bot 
is going to move a spot. Are there five translators? Yes. They get an influence. There is nobody in the green, so that's what they'll choose. And then they will put a gold on the leftmost neutral translator. There you go. Okay. So we've they're not resting next time either. We've got a bit of time. My mark is here though. So on the way to this Sanskrit one, I don't know that I'm going to get to, get to do both. I guess this Syriac one is just one, two, three, four, five points. Whereas this is eight points plus multiple influence. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the one to do, isn't it? And maybe the Syriac one. And we've got a blue six. Let's travel. Matt, I don't know if we're going to rest again, but in case we do, put that action out. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got all the gold I need. No, I haven't. I've got all the money that I need. It's tempting to get a purple influence to be back in control of that again for the last card that comes out. I've got to take a white die, though, if I put something else in the purple temple. And we can get purple influence from going up this track, which we can do from in a minute from delivering this. Don't worry about that. Go on. The purple. The purple is three influence if you're in charge of that, which you will be if they clear off for the card that they'll probably get. Go for it. But then you've got to get green to deliver to. No, orange, you've got to die. Deliver it to orange. So four coins. Get an orange influence. Get a gold. And go up the maths track, which I can't. So I get a purple influence. Now Luke is in charge. That's that. Unfortunately, I didn't pay anyone underneath this track. Bot is not resting yet. They're moving one, two. Are oh, there three scrolls? Yes, they're going to translate. Can they translate something Persian? There's two Persian things. So lowest row, they're both in the top. Color focus, orange, this one. Then place gold. It's one gold for Persian. So rightmost neutral that can do Persian, mm, you. Almost done. Well, not on mine can do Persian either. Right. But I'm the right... No, I want to be left most. Don't I? They do theirs right to left, mine left to right. To help them retire the most and me retire the least. Okay. So that's them. They're going to rest next time, which could be the end of the game. Well, they would trigger the end of the game, which means I would... Oh, thanks, John. I can influence a card, which I think... I think I just put it on. I don't think I talked about it, but yeah, I was, I put it on the card. It was already already on there. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, pop it there. I'm probably not going to get that, but just in case. Why not? Stop it doing anything. Oh, we need to fill this back up, though. From when I delivered. Okay, it isn't. There are now two cards left here. Next delivery or rest could be it. Okay, blue travel. I think we're caught up. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Some amazing goodies. That's thanks to Sham and Sam. Hey, for designing the games in the first place, but for reaching out again and asking if I wanted to do a video, which yes, I do. So yeah, if they, when it, whoever triggers the end of the game, you finish the round and do one more round. So you've got a, a bit, a bit of play. I would get one more if they end the game. So, translating that that I just put there. Sanskrit to Chinese or Hebrew. Is 
it can't be translated right now because I lost one of my translators in the chain. So we've got to recruit. Okay, it needs to be. Okay, we can do it with two gold. If we just get someone that can translate. I see Chinese and Sanskrit are tier three languages, so you're not going to get someone that can translate straight into Arabic from them. I need someone that can translate Hebrew to something else. Oh yeah, I had... Yeah, I don't think we're going to get to translate. We're going to need three gold, so we're going to need to put them in this room. Yes, we need a three to recruit then. That's okay. So, we're probably not going to rest, so I don't think this particularly matters which order I'm doing these things in. So why not get a gold then? Gold is points. So a white three can get me this translator. I'm going to put them in this room for one silver. Which will get me a gold. Because I'm going to spend three. Oh, there's the gold that I needed. So I could... Oh. I have got the money if I want to risk that being taken. They're going to rest next time. They're not going to translate. Because then... This person, after one use, will retire. Because I don't think there's enough time left in the game to do this delivered and translated again. See, I'm going to pay all of my silver. I've got no protection silver to keep this safe anymore. But I've got the three gold that I need to do the translation. I've got the orange die I need to do the translation. Even if they trigger the end of the game now, I've still got one more turn. So that might end up being the very last thing that I do. Okay, rest for the bot. First thing they do is reveal the game is not about to end. I could have done with it ending, to be honest. So that's got an influence on it. So this goes over to here. Or is any temple empty? No, that gets discarded. Then move their influence marker. It was majority blue, so they move this way. Benefits, they did all five cards, majority blue, so they retire this person. And then their cards shuffle. So, yeah, there's going to be an indeterminate number of turns now. As soon as somebody delivers or rests, the game end will be triggered, but not. Benefit for the room you play. Oh yeah, I didn't do the new room, did I? I changed my mind, but didn't take the new benefits. So for such an expensive room, I get to draw two more dice out the back, a, blue, a red and a yellow. Maybe we'll get to do some track stuff. And a worker of my choice, let's say red. Or yellow. I think I'm as. So I think maybe get orange for the track. Cause, no, I want blue for the track. I want blue for the track. That's okay. Get another blue then. Because then you can do blue, turn something into a blue. Blue, make it a blue six. Right. Thanks, John. They've done their rest, haven't they? I think. Let's translate because I've got no money to protect myself. So. Might as well get the benefits from chemistry. I don't think it's going to matter. So we want... To translate with orange, because it's coming from the orange temple. So Sanskrit to Arabic. We can do Sanskrit to Hebrew. I also haven't put an influence on my translator. Hebrew to Syriac. And Syriac to Arabic. And then you go above my player board. I go up on the maths track again. But I can't, so I get a purple influence. Loads of that. And then... 
I get a white worker and influence on a chord. Are they going to try and translate? Syriac, maybe, if they move one? Or if they move none? Oh, there's a Persian, if they move none. Yeah, try and get a, a silver out of them. And then... What's in my bag? I'm just trying to think what's my dice sum right now. If I get that purple, it'll help. It's only a... It's a couple of points swing, though, isn't it? It might make the game. Oh, look at my dice. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, if I can get that purple. So I'd have plus two, which is a bit better than theirs right now. Thanks, John. All my translators are retired as well. So there is not going to be any more translating happening from my side anyway. But I can decide where these are going. So, oh yeah, what I was thinking of doing, I'm going to have to take white dice. Because one can just go under a, a thing for free and that's okay. I think we're going to be doing, I want your ability. Orange influence is going to be nice. Okay, there's already something there. I've got to pay a silver, haven't got, or take a white die. So there's another white die. I'm going to have a lot of white dice. I'm going to have six or more probably here. How many did I count? It was like eight. I'm going to lose those three points, I think, unfortunately. I've been naughty with that. Then... You can just go in the blank space, so I don't have to pay anything. I'm tempted. It's not necessarily going to be the very last action, is it? I'm tempted to take two extra white dice. I'd be able to remove one and gain another dice, so it might balance it out. And I'll, I think I'll have two workers to pay. I'm going to do that. I don't know if that maths out right. So it just cancels itself out, doesn't it? I'm taking another one. But I'll be able to fix it. Yeah, put it somewhere else. Put it somewhere else. So you only have to take one white dice. Okay. So. That's it for my turn, isn't it? You all retired and it's bots go. And they could potentially be triggering the end here. Are there five translators? Not anymore. So they're going to hire a translator. Their favourite is out. So next one along is now not present. Uh, their sum is one. I didn't move the marker along. So the rightmost one space is there. And they get two coins. One, two. They pop a gold on their rightmost translator, which retires them. Okay. Tracks. We need to get up this blue track, don't we? I've got no gold. So does that mean my workers... I could potentially draw more out of the bag, couldn't I, with this? I might have to be... Re I might have to rest. That might be terrible. Just to force the end of the game to come. To put these out and make them blue. I mean, it's such a waste of a lovely purple dye, isn't it? But I don't think I need them for anything else. And with this, we'll be able to unlock this and and do it again, maybe? I've got 10. I don't need 10, though. Because I haven't got any gold to spend. I'm going to be using this option, have eight or more, move up the track once and get two silver. So I get influence in a temple of my choice. I think let's go for green. I don't think I can get influence in green at the end, but I could get influence in the other two, I think. 
I get the secondary reward as well, the consolation prize. And we're on three there. I get me purple die. It's still a four. And I get this action card at like a bit late, but hey, look, it's got a five already on it. Makes it really easy to get high numbers. And when you rest, pay a worker to get rid of a white die. Quite nice. And look at the built-in one. Get an extra die out of your bag. If you don't put an action there, but you could do translating or... We could do translating, you know, from Syriac. If we use the bot card, I haven't got a gold at the moment. Depends how many actions we've got. Could potentially translate again. Right, so that's all unlocked. But then my benefits, add a die. I don't think the colour particularly matters to me. And then get an orange influence. I take control. So suddenly we've got two temples we're in control of now. If we delivered something to green, we'd be in control of that. And they wouldn't take control back from us for getting all three stars on the end. Maybe just do a delivery to the green temple. I haven't got four coins though, I've got two. Okay, I think that's my turn. The purple die from the gold card. Oh, goes to me back, thanks. Still got it though. Oh, I haven't got the card that cares about me having purple dice. So that's there, in it? Bot is moving two spots. Are there three scrolls? Yes, they are going to translate. Is there a Hebrew? No. Is there a Persian? Yes. They translate that one. There's a gold up for grabs. Nobody can translate Persian, so the rightmost one of theirs that can't. And that's that. So. I've used me dice though, haven't I? I can't really translate. I would need purple. So I would need to get myself a gold. Syriac to Arabic is right there. I would need to get myself a gold. I don't need a gold. Oh, gold if you wanted to translate. You're not going to be able to translate. What about delivering? Get two money now. And then deliver it next time. Even if the end of the game has been triggered, you could do that. Could get two money. Well, we could just go up the tracks again. Go up the red track this time. Sounds like a good plan to me. Get two more dice out of the bag. Get another worker. Yellow worker. But then you're going, to have a, you're going to have an action afterwards and you're going to have to rest. If they trigger the end of the game, though, it's okay. We're hinging on that. Otherwise, you've got to spend your last action resting. You get some money, but you'll also have to take on a load of white dice for doing all of this nonsense. Okay, two dice out of the bag. They are a white and a blue. And we are... I'm going up the tracks again, aren't we? So there's two more coins. I mean, if they trigger the end of the game, you're not going to get to the top of purple. But I will as my last action, and then I'll have the three points at the end. Yeah. So we're going up the red track once. And getting two coins. Bot is moving a space. Are there five scrolls? No. They are delivering. So the first Persian that's available? No. Syriac? Yes. Do I want to pay them to stop them putting it out? No. The colour focus is orange. I don't think... Could I translate that? Is that a better thing to do? Hey Benjamin, how's it going? Sorry, my voice is disappearing a bit. I love it. I mean, this is, this is only like my third game of it, and it's like like Wayfarers and just like um, the West Kingdom games before them. They are lovely, complex things to get into, but the solo is a, a beautiful puzzle. Right. Because that could put me up and I'd be at four. That would be worth three points for translating. Because they're triggering the end of the game now. 
Yeah, they're getting two influences. Oh, does that mess me up? Ah. Wish I'd chosen orange instead of purple. So they're triggering the end of the game. It's the only card left. I get one turn. So evaluating this, I'm first. I want three points. They are the next two, so yeah, there is a tiebreaker of which one they take first, but they've got both of the others, so. I do take control of two temples now, and I get the... Oh, I still have control of that. I get consolation prize of a coin and a gold. Probably could have helped me do something. I could translate now, couldn't I, with a gold? So they are going to get one more action. Are they del Yeah, they've had their influence. So the end of the game's been triggered. This is my last turn. It's going to be either recruiting or traveling. Oh yeah, I can't translate. I've already used the action space. Oh well. So... I suppose if I deliver it now to the orange, I'll get an influence and take control, and that's like a four-point swing. And I can still go up a track. Uh, we use the... For the when everything's run out, we use the leftover cards that weren't in the stack to fill in all the gaps. So basically, which track, which, which track by going up a space would I get a point? One of these. Just doing a travel for two. Doesn't really matter what we do, does it? Could do some colour matching. Oh yeah, I haven't given the bot the rewards, have I? They get a die. And they retire. They're both worth three points, so the leftmost one. Yeah, I think the best I can do is just just translate just um just travel and take control of the orange temple. There'll be a point from the tracks, two-point swing from taking control of the temple away. It's not bad. Well, I, yeah, that's the only choice I've left myself with in terms of actions. So I've got to put a die with it, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not, um, I'm not colour matching. Cause putting influence and stuff out isn't going to affect my points. I just want to stop there, I think. Gives orange influence. Yeah, I'll take control of the orange temple as well, yeah. So... One, two, three, four coins. Orange influence. And a gold. And there'll be two golds worth of points. Thanks, Monica. See you soon. Hopefully they don't take that control away from me. And I think that's all I can do. So what's their last action? It's going to be moving zero. Are there seven translators? No, they're hiring a translator. Uh, it's going to be... Are you already out? Yeah. Nope. So they're going to go in the rightmost one space, which is there. And that's that. So. End of the game stuff. Where's my notes? End of game. Yeah, yeah. Play one full round. Take any gold on your still employed translators. I haven't got any. And then you dice some. So you work this out at the end of the game. So, if you remember the end of the Crystal Maze. Well, actually, it's on again now, isn't it? If you remember the Richard O'Brien Crystal Maze. From the orange... Oh, I haven't moved up on the orange track, thank you. Oh, yeah, from your point. Thanks, Sam and John. We're counting up our gold tickets and silver tickets. And yeah, I don't think I've won the star prize. But we've got a positive dice sum. Not a big enough positive dice sum, but, you know, I didn't do a very good job of um, <laughs> of having less than six, did I? 
and that's gonna that's gonna count into the the end score because up here it's different for higher play counts but at a two player count i have a dice sum of one so plus one but the bot through its various machinations has got plus two so it's going to get a bit more than me and then i need i need to just jot this down somewhere don't i i get a calculator up right so points from me points from my dice sum nothing points from retired translators in my player board can you see them all still i just about i've, I've judged them around a bit haven't i so we've got two five eight ten eleven fourteen that's not bad guilds you control and caliph cards up here i control all of the guilds not present so much on the caliph cards but hey the guilds love me uh, so that's going to be six points seven nothing nothing ten points Uh, research marker positions, a bit better on that maybe, five, six, seven, eight, nothing, nothing, nine, ten. Just reaching over for me, uh, my keyboard that's leaned against something. And then, scroll cards above my player board. Remember, repeated conditions, score the same amount each time. So we have got... Hebrew is three points. Every two coins is a gold. I haven't got two coins. Every two gold is a point. So that's four points. If I've got six or more white, that I definitely have got. Minus three. So we're on one point. Plus three. So four. A point for every Hebrew. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine. A point for every orange. Ten. Have I got four or more red? Yes. Eleven, twelve. Four, sixteen. And I'm at seven on maths. Oh, I forgot the number now. One, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, sixteen, twenty. So I think I don't think I've managed to beat me my best fifty-eight so far. I think yeah, that's all of my points. So, the bot. I haven't made lovely notes for the bot's things. They are similar. Just don't want to forget anything. So, from the bot's dice sum, they get two points. And then all of their retired translators... They've got one, two, four, six, seven... 8, 10, 13, 16. Guilds they control, none. But Caliph cards, quite a bit, I think. Let's see, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9. And then the scroll cards above their player board. So the one Chinese they've got, and you can't quite see how many they've got, but I'll tell you. Uh, the one Chinese they've got gives them seven straight points. So that 34 i think i've won well don't speak prematurely they've got a lot coming in here uh, so hebrew they did two a point each for every research marker they got down so four times two it's going to be eight so i'm 42 only 12 behind and this one is it's a point for everyone retired right from the neutral translators, not retired, I mean. From the neutral translators still in their rooms. We've already had retired. One, two, three, four, five times two Persian scrolls. That's going to be 10 points. So the final score is pretty neck and neck. It is 54 versus 52. I just about, just about managed to clinch it. I have not beaten, well, my best like 58 and... People weren't watching me then. I was probably getting stuff wrong. But there we go. That is a game. 
I just about lasted uh, through a game of um, Scholars of the Sartorius. Again, I, I apologise. I've got a, a bit of a cough. I was a bit ill the other day. Uh, but hopefully, when we do this again, in about a month's time, hey, I'm going to be better. We'll step up the bot difficulty. Maybe one step. I only just managed it. We'll, we'll try the epic game for sure. I don't know about difficulties, but we will uh, we'll do the epic game that's a little bit longer. There's just the piles have got a few more uh, scrolls in them. And uh, yeah, maybe I think that's, I've still, I don't like to just do it where like, you can see the other video for explaining it. I like to, for people to just be able to jump in, but I'll try and be a bit more brief with my explanations and decisions and stuff. It's not going to happen though, is it? Thank you so much for watching. I've really been enjoying this. It's early days, but hey, we'll be back to uh, give it another go in some other form very soon. Steve's just popped the link in the YouTube chat for the Kickstarter page. You can click on there now to get notified when the project launches in March. And yeah, I'll be back with another stream around that time as well. Thank you everyone for being here. You can support me in various ways. There's Patreon, there is uh, Kofi. Your support will be massively appreciated and is how I'm able to do this. Uh, so thank you so much for everyone for being here. Thank you, Shem. Thank you, Sam. And uh, yeah, we'll be back soon for more great streams next week and more Scholars of the South Tigris in about a month's time. And I need to redeem myself. The last Wayfarer stream we had, was that in December? Embarrassed myself against the bot there. Did dismally. We need to revisit that when we get a chance as well. But for now, I'm, uh, I'm going to stop talking for as long as possible, really. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for putting up with the coughing breaks. And uh, I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye, bye, bye.